Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody had a good Easter. Mine was uh, was good. I drove down to uh, Price, where my family is. It's south of me. Some of you may know that from uh, my video where I complained about the hippies we ran into last time. Didn't have that problem this time. Cruised down in a good two hours, 15 minutes, came back the same. Had a lot of time to play with my new uh, XM18 and think about it. Um, I'll talk about that in another video. This one is, I don't know what this video is guys. Sometimes I think I'm just a freaking weirdo. But I, I get, uh, I start thinking about weird things just in general, but you know, my channel's focuses on uh, knives, so obviously that's what I'm gonna talk more about, but uh, I'm just, I'm fascinated with the history of things and you know, the way the market, the knife market works and things like that. So one, one thing that I found that's always kind of fun to do is to go to a site like Arizona Custom Knives because Arizona Custom Knives keeps record of what everything's sold at price-wise only site that I've seen that does that. So, however, it doesn't date it, which would be cool if it, if it had an actual date of the sale. But anyways, so it's kind of fun to go to this site and then you can look up Rick Hinderer and then you can go to previously previous knife sold by Rick Hinderer and you can kind of see a visual history of his career. So if you see here, there's 21 pages of uh, stuff that they've sold of his. So if you go to page 21, you see like some really cool older designs that he did. So this is pre-XM. This is before he came up with XM. This is just his custom stuff. He has a whole pre-tack area where he did kind of like fancy folders and things like that. So does Emerson. Uh, I was going to do a video on that too. You know, stuff that you never would have thought Emerson would have done, he did back in the 80s. Um, anyways. So this is kind of the stuff that Rick started with, doing stuff like this. And then, and as you can see, you know, 300 bucks, $275. And this is where a date would be really nice to kind of see at what point in time this kind of stuff was out there. But this is all pre-XM, um, XM18, but you can kind of see a little bit of where the design's coming from. You know, you start seeing some similarities. And I just find it interesting because everyone, you know, they think Hinder, they think XM18, XM24. But he actually produced a lot of different stuff. A lot of custom stuff and then a lot of different designs apart from that. But that's all he's really known for now. But this one's pretty interesting down here. So here's some more. Just some stuff that he did before the whole XM thing came on here. You can see the use of his little plate here uh, for mounting the pocket clips like you see on his XM series. You know, here is the design that he's using on the G10 for the XM series. So it's just kind of cool, but he has a thumb disc is what he's using in here. Um, it's just cool to look at that stuff. But right here, this is the baby, the flame, Gen 1 and Gen 2. This is the precursor to the XM series, and especially if you look at the back, this is very, very similar. He's got the lock bar stabilizer, same pocket clip, um, same stuff here. Lanyard hold is the same. A lot of this stuff, the handle shape, the choil, you know, all this stuff is the same. And then, of course, if you continue up just a little bit more, bam, XM18. And uh, this is a little cool thing to read here. New from Rick new from Rick, XM18, he has taken his Gen 2 flame design and created this new frame lock concept. So, <laughs> just crazy, you know, this knife design that's like taking the knife world by storm, it's crazy to read. Oh, hey, this, uh, this Rick Hinderer guy that's been doing these customs, he's got this new thing out called an XM18, check it out. And of course, it went for $400. 400 bucks, which I don't think you can see because it's all being funky but uh, yeah 400 bucks is that insane or what you know and of course his actual prices now I think they're still under 500 the prices you're seeing is all secondary market over inflation so uh, just a heads up to you guys 
unless something happens like he stops making knives or something of that nature it's going to level out you gotta remember you know if you're somebody that really wants one of these and you're freaking out because there's just no way you can afford it I mean they're they're going for astronomical prices uh, it's gonna go down you know knives unlike consumable goods you, they stick around they don't wear out they don't get thrown away per se so people's desire to have this knife are being satisfied and he's continuously producing these. You gotta remember, they're just production knives, especially, uh, you know, like the Gen 1 and Gen 2 stuff was very custom-y, but now it's pretty much, you know, CNC machined, outsourced work. Um, I, I hear he'll pop into the shop and do a little work here and there, but for the most part, if you have a hinder knife, he probably didn't even touch it. But, uh, so yeah, prices will go down, and that's also um, a little heads up to people that, you know, if you're buying these for investment, it's probably not the best idea because I'm, I'm picturing in about two years you're going to start seeing the prices come down and it'll be more of a, a Chris Reeve type thing, you know, like a Sebenza. If you want a Sebenza, you can go buy one from multiple sites and they have it. There may be a few blade shapes that are out of stock and you got to wait for it, but for the most part, if you want one, you can go out and get a Chris Reeve knife. Um, and I, I picture in the next few years, Rick stuff will be back to that. If you want an XM18, you can go pop onto multiple sites and pick one up right from there. And then, uh, you know, hopefully he gets his production stuff all sorted out and, uh, you know, his shop will start producing his production stuff and then he can uh, focus on customs and things like that. Anyway, so that's just a little tidbit of stuff that goes through my mind on a day to day basis. All right, guys. Later.